Alright folks, this is uh, alt tab. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Shadows from Shadows Abstract Gaming. It is one o'clock in the morning and I figured that yeah, I have to come back in, play some seven days to die, get some time, record it. Let's see what I can do about terrorizing some zombies while I'm at it. And go sell a couple of things. A trader if I can. You know all the stuff I don't need at this moment. Keep that one. So that. Uh, don't need that. Don't want that. Don't want that. So that. So that. Yeah, it. <laughs> oh, well, don't need them either. Or that, or that. And so that. Be a smart ass. And of course, forget about the landmine. <laughs> Thought I did not put it right there. <laughs> Shaxel move. Okay, yeah. As you can see, I don't lose anything some stuff. Try not to get blown up again. But <laughs> yeah. And I forgot I put them out there. What a wonderful day. Alright, now what 
good do you have? What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. That's what. Something else good to save travels. Oh, I forgot I could sell one of them. Peace be with you, my friend. Everything else. You have a great day now. Hey, I'll take a med kit. Oh, hell yeah. Crap, we got or can't see. Options. Video. <laughs> Just because I keep forgetting about them. Until I get a headlamp, I ain't doing much of anything outside. <coughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. 
know one of them's gonna step on something. some things. May not be a whole lot, but I'm gonna head down this hill. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Where's their friends? I was wondering where the hell they went. I knew I had them. There we go. Later on, I'll run back to the traders. I'll have all them to sell. Yeah, scrap that. Okay, no, I have no more dudes. Not the greatest, but you know, do what you can. Make do with what you got. Oh, I did not check to see what time it was. Oh man. Sitting here waiting to pass some time and oh good lord. <sighs> On shadows and welcome to Shadows Abstract Gaming. Where, well, on the shadow, there's not much you can be said about a shadow. I mean, the reason I am a shadow is because I can appear, disappear. And just as quick as most people. That's not the reason why I chose Shadows. Shadows was actually a play on the TV series Dark Shadows. Where if you've ever watched any kind of like vampire TV series, I like to find this a lot. And 
it was a nickname that kind of stuck around for me because you know, you'd see me one minute and the next you wouldn't. So my friends called me shadows as a joke, I guess, in some way. And it just kind of stuck because they didn't realize how much of a shadow I really could be. And I just always enjoyed being a shadow. And I created a virtual persona, so to speak. I created Lady Shadows Grey Moon, which I've had a few people tell me it was kind of cryptic, Celtic even, because. Well, most think of a moon, they think of blue. I thought of it gray. Plus, there was like, they had a last name generator in Second Life back in 2010 when I created that name. And it was just something that I became accustomed to. I became accustomed to a name that not many could understand and like I've said before in the past I like vampires and I went to second life thinking okay well, I'm gonna make me Seven minutes for a bottle of murky water. And maybe because I don't have a cooking pot yet. Hmm. And as for my old man, well, it kind of reminded me of the Daywalker boy. So that's in a virtual world. That's what we ended up calling him was uh, Raven Shadow, or is it Raven Shadow Blade? Raven because well, I like ravens. Shadow because well he wanted something similar to mine and Blade because well he liked the movie Blade. I mean we have all three on DVD. But for him and I there is actually a history and that history is I met him when I was 12 years old and during that time my parents were getting a divorce and I had nobody to talk to so I ran into him one day in the park here in town that we live in and we started talking, became friends, hanging around, that kind of stuff. My dad didn't like him. Now, truth be told, my dad doesn't like anybody, not even himself. But 
And my parents had a problem with two things. Him being a black guy and the age difference. But they didn't understand that we were nothing more than friends. As a matter of fact, I was friends with him. Yeah. Well, let's see, I'm 42, so yeah, about 30 years now. He's been my best friend for 30 years. But I never knew that I was going to become attracted to him. Honestly, I really wish to somebody I could talk to. Somebody that I respected, somebody that made me laugh. Maybe feel good about life. As chaotic as mine was. And we lost contact for a couple years. He went to county jail for drug charges. I mean, he's never denied the fact that he was a dealer or a bad guy in that aspect. But. And I had thought about him off and on over the years. Never made anything about it. Never once thought, well, he's going to be somebody that I'm going to pursue for the rest of my life. I just thought of him as nothing more than a friend. It wasn't until I was 16. I had moved back in with my dad because my mother, my mother's second husband, well, he got drunk and put his hands on me and I have no tolerance for that. So I called my dad, my dad came over, got me. And from that, it went to... I'm gonna go see how my friend is. We ran into each other. By this time I was 16, almost 17 years old. And I was doing everything I could to make the state emancipate me. I didn't want to be with my parents anymore. They really didn't want me around. My mother would dump me off everywhere else. My father would... I guess the zombies weren't that smart. But, uh... uh my father left me in town one weekend. Gave me a hundred bucks. left me at my cousin's, told me to have fun, he'd see me on Monday. Well, I ran into my old man. And one thing led to another, and by December, right around my birthday, I went and took a pregnancy test and found out I was pregnant with our first daughter. My father took me out, said some not so nice words to me about it. And then at the time, it wasn't to do about the skin issue, the, the age. It was my father had an issue with the skin color. Something along the lines that he didn't want a zebra for a granddaughter or something like that. So I went back to my mom. I was only at my mom's for a couple of months before I started running away. By then, state of Pennsylvania decided, well, she's old enough to do all this, she's old enough to be on her own. So after I turned 17, I dropped out of high school and got emancipated. I had two daughters to him. Our second one was born in October of 96.
and by 99-2000, the wonderful state of Pennsylvania has a mental health rule that if you have a mental health history, they, we call them Children and Youth Social Services down here, or CYS. Other places, they're known as DPS, stuff like that. Like DCS or Department of whatever. Anyway, they're family killers is what I consider them as. And but in Pennsylvania, if you have a mental health issue, they can hold it up to, up on you until you're 25 years of age. We didn't know this. He had previously lost children because his ex didn't want to take care of their children. Plus, the drugs didn't help. Well, they held that over him, then they turned around and found out about my mental health history from the age of seven on. And it took the kids. They took them. And we fought, got them back, and then... In 98, a week before they were supposed to close our case, I just turned 21. That December, I turned 21 December 15th. December 17th, they came in and took them. And we fought for two years to get him back. Two and a half, three years. Eventually, I couldn't do it anymore. They had me medicated. I was a yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir. And I couldn't deal with it. We had one last hearing because they had started talking about terminating parental rights. I gave him proxy for me because I was sick. He went because we had sat down and talked about it and then agreed it wasn't fair to us, it wasn't fair to the girls. He went in with a hell Mary and said it was either all or nothing. You either give him back or you take the rights. Granted, looking back now, we were foolish. We think anything else, any other way, they took them, they took the parental rights, they said, lock, stock, barrel, we're going to take them, and then after that, me and him split, we separated for 13 years, and I ran into him in April 2013, and everything I had buried came back to life. The love I had for him, it never, ever died. He had changed. I had changed. I had spent three years healing from an abusive relationship where the guy told me, that the next man that ever fell in love with me would be an asshole. Straight up. Just came out and said that. That he felt sorry for anybody that would ever fall in love with me. That I was selfish. That I didn't deserve anybody. I deserved what happened to the girls. And it was all because I couldn't have any more kids. And truth be told. I didn't want any. Not with him. There was just something about him. I tried to make a relationship with him and it just I wanted to please my family at the time my family was so gun ho about me moving on and bettering my life that it just didn't matter to them
Well, that's a shame because it should never be like that. And when I started coming over here to this town, because I lived over in another town with my mom and her husband, ironically, I did forgive the guy that she ended up marrying. And came to him court since I was an adult that if he ever laid a hand on me again, that I would knock him so hard into the middle of next week that... He wouldn't know whether he was coming or going. But when I hooked back up with Blade, it was the best thing I ever did. I mean, yeah, we had changed. He had ended up becoming what he never wanted to be, which was a drug addict again. But when we met, he told me that he was a couple of months clean and that he needed help to stay clean. And I told him, I said, if we try for a relationship, the same rules apply. You put that pipe to your lips. Don't come back to me. I'm not going to deal with the lying. Here he is, seven and a half years later, clean and sober. But yeah, if people ever say that true love doesn't exist, it does. And you can really find your soulmate. I believe he's mine. I support him in everything. I mean, even a couple years ago when he was falsely convicted of drug paraphernalia. Many others would have walked, I stayed. That was just the type of person I was. Since then we've been together, I have helped him overcome a lot of things, he's helped me overcome a lot of things. And we tried to reconnect with our children, and a couple of his kids, you don't know where they're at. We know where our two girls are at, and sadly they want nothing to do with us. They think the worst of us. And, yeah, that's fine. Think the worst of us, we don't care. Great weather eventually, we've been having. Eventually, maybe one day, they'll change their mind. But, for that time, I'm holding my breath. I've come to the conclusion that life is what it is. You learn to roll with the flow. Take the punches as they come. And if something good happens, something good happens. If not. Pleasure doing business with you.
I know. I know. <clears throat> Grandpa's new channel, huh? <laughs> Much obliged, stranger. <coughs> show on the road and get the loot. But yeah, now you know the story of Shadow and Blade. <laughs> Our names. Like I said, oh, yeah, they blew them all up last night. Let's go this way. Let's see what kind of trouble I can get into. My puppy. Yep, my puppy. Uh, yeah, I know what you are. I'm not going down there. Oh, good shot. 
I said, um... Sweetie. Okay, yeah. As if you can't tell, I don't care too much for cheerleaders. Oh. Hey, you. Shit. Did a boo boo. I <laughs> did a boo boo. I thought he was only a cow. I didn't think he was a beef dog. Yeah. Shit, I know my archery skills increasing, but damn.
Oh, you nasty fucker. I guess the disturbed tourist said he was gonna try to have some tasty cow meat. Yeah, see, that's what I thought it was. Shadow, when the hell are you gonna learn not to be picking on something bigger than you? I'm going back home. Oh, oh, come here, Farmer Brown. Oops. You lost your head. Come here, zombie business, man. Oh, don't you get tired? Uh, I think she kind of lost her head there.
Oh, yep. Anyways, I'm gonna get, head back to the place I'm taking over for right now. And wrap this video up so that I can try to get to bed at a decent time. <laughs> uh, don't you look freaky? I kind of like you. And yes, before it's said, I am kind of a freak. But aren't we all? I mean, really? So happy I didn't run into the car alarm. Here it's in the road. But yeah, like I said, no, um I'm gonna be wrapping this up here. Get it. Convert it over and get my inventory sorted out. <laughs> I think I got that much meat. Get this taken care of so I can get this uploaded to uh, yeah, YouTube. And You know what, while we're here. outside so we get some But yeah, it's almost 2 o'clock in the morning for me, as usual. <laughs> yeah, that should be enough for real. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. But, yeah, no, it... But, yeah, this is my new venture into gaming. I'm finally able to play Summer Days to Die. As you can see, I've got pretty good FPS. I'm playing the Darkest Falls mod. I put it down on the easiest settings because being solo player, I'm not that great. I'm still learning everything. And plus, I like the exploring aspect of it. I mean, I'm sure everybody can agree with that. Exploring this game is just awesome. wrap this up here so <coughs> hang on Sorry about that, folks. There we go. That's what happens when you have a signage drainage. Because you're allergic to the environment. But, yeah, no, nah, it's going on an hour recording. So, yeah, I'm going to pause it, actually. And then kick up another one. Go with it. You know, can't sleep. So, might as well game. So, give me a few minutes and I will be right back with you. <laughs> 